Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a fruit drink? No, it's Radio 5 Live, Radio 4's most contentious sibling, and it was launched yesterday. David Jessel recalls the opening lines of some other new stations. Good morning and welcome to Britain's first national commercial radio station. This is Classic FM. I'm Nick Bailey and this is George Frederick Handel. As I was doing that very first programme, I, I, I wasn't, to be honest, conscious really of the audience. I think I had so many other things to concentrate on. Uh, the technical side, uh, for one, uh, the music, which I was still fairly unfamiliar with, and just the the, the, the mechanics of, of, of the show, which was really quite complicated. So I didn't really have time to get nervous. Nick Bailey, famous for being the first voice on a new radio station. It may not seem much to the rest of you, but believe me, in media land, that's a whole award category in itself when it comes to the radio Oscars. I myself have already prepared my modest acceptance speech for the subcategory of people who said the first words on a rolling news commercial radio station which has just lost its franchise. Cue younger man in unfortunate flared trousers. Cue pompous station ident. This is London Broadcasting, the news and information voice of independent radio. Welcome to LBC. It's six o'clock, October the 8th. My name's David Jessel. This is The Morning Show, and here's the news. <laughs> LBC's launch went like a military operation. There was blood everywhere. We'd begged the bosses not to let us on the air because we, the broadcasters, knew that the station wasn't ready. My three-hour morning show began at six and was meant to rival the Today programme. There were no reporters. To begin with, there wasn't even a producer. There was, I think, a commercial for frozen peas, but never again after the first day. When I asked how I should fill the time, it was suggested that I rang people up, read interesting things out of the papers, and talked about what sort of a day it had been. I said that at six o'clock in the morning, it wouldn't have been any sort of a day. I did have a wonderful and wonderfully insincere payoff line. Now that you know all you need to know about the day, I'd say, have a nice one. Shameless. Talking of which, here's Tony Blackburn. The voice of Radio 1. Just for fun. Music. Too much. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to the exciting new sound of Radio 1. The preparation that we did really was, um, I mean, building the studios to suit us. I mean, when I was on the light programme, the first thing I was uh, confronted with was sitting in a room without any records at all, just talking, and a dear old soul behind a glass panel knitting. So they did build us some continuity studios. They weren't very good ones, actually. Given that Radio 1 has had more relaunches than the Space Shuttle, I don't think the Academy will recognise its opening natal noises as a unique event in the history of the medium. I do hope Radio One's audiences pick up, if only to spare us from those hideous and vulgar poster advertisements urging us to listen to the thing. Mind you, I still think that Radio 4 itself, the name, not the network, is a triumph of the image maker's idiocy. Four. Yes, they wanted a name that was comforting, solid, four-square, reliable, homely, serving the listener. That's why they stopped calling it the home service, I suppose. And who was there in those first days of the home service, when radio really was wireless, when the valves glowed through the holes in the back, and when the aisle was full of noises from strange-sounding places like Daventry, Hilversum, and Canesham? The time is just now ten minutes to twelve. This is David Dunhill. And this is the end of the home service for today, and for all days. In one sense, I suppose, we're... Like a bride on the eve of her wedding, we go on being the same person, we hope, but we will never again have the same name. Tomorrow at 6.35am, we become Radio 4. So, goodbye. Home service. When it comes to television, it's a rule that the opening of any new venture is a disaster, at least as far as all the other media are concerned. Do you remember when, if you said, I want to be alone, the reply came, try watching Channel 4? 
Then TVAM came along and that was such a disaster that everyone forgot what a disaster Channel 4 was supposed to be and realised that it was really rather good. BBC Two's opening was a disaster in the dark. There was a power cut which served the corporation right for its earlier cynical execution of Grace Archer to spoil the opening of ITV. Once again, this opening programme of Channel 2 is coming from the Alexandra Palace newsroom owing to a massive electric failure at the television centre in West London. And so to Radio 5 Live, the well-known fruit drink of the airwaves, the rolling newspaper of the air. Good luck to Radio 5 Live. I hope it won't be full of the usual magazine programme polyfiller, all anniversary nostalgia of how things used to be and previews of what's going to happen. For the moment, things look promising. Of course, the most difficult script line to write is the one that finally kills off a station. The right tone is dignity tinged with injured regret. All that's left is this large Bakelite and copper antique switch. Read the label, Earl. Radio 5... On, off. Shall we do it, Earl? Oh, my hand, Nigel. Be brave, Earl. Let's pull the switch together. I love you, Nigel. I love you, Earl. One, One two, two, three... Oh, hang on a minute, Nigel. I...